हाँ चल रहा है मैं ऑडियो Okay, it seems like she is not available. Uh, maybe the mic is not being working for her. So I'll go for that next now. Aditya, can you hear me? Yes. Aditya, yes. can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, Aditya, can we a little more louder and and can you come near to your mic so that we would able to you know hear you very you know sound and clear? Yes, I am near to mic now. Good. So Aditya, what's your uh, actually background? What do you do, and how are you being uh, expecting this course to join? What is the you know concept behind? What actually expectation you're looking for? Yeah, currently I started my career in uh, data warehousing only. I worked in data stage and informatica. So okay. So I have uh, one and a half year experience of data warehousing. How much experience? Can you repeat that once again, Aditya? Yeah, one and a half years. One and a half year. Good. So, what you're looking for? What is the expectation out of this course? When you say mastering, what do you want to become a master in? Is it data modeling, ETL, and BI? Yeah, uh, actually ETL part. Okay. So, this course will be a combination of your modeling. You'll be able to know how you design a data model, a data warehouse, data mart. Also, we'll be doing a tail end. You already know Informatica, so there's an opportunity to learn tail end, which is a new open source ETL available the tool. And also, Tableau is one of the popular BI tool. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Stay tuned. Uh, I think I'm talking to Mr. Amit Rai. Yes. Uh, so Amit, how are you doing? Can you hear me out? Uh, yeah, Indra, I'm here. You? Okay. I can hear. So, uh, is it the screen? Is it? Can you see the screen as well? Yes. Yes. Uh, no problem. Good. So, tell me about a bit of yourself and what exactly you do. Or what is the expectation out of this mastering course? Actually, I am working as a ETL developer in SOIT Solution Bangalore, and uh, I just wanted to know about architecture of data warehousing and what is the scopes of uh, all architect overall architecture, and uh, what can I do with uh, more data warehousing knowledge. That's why I joined this uh, webinar. Sure. So you joined a right session where we talk about more from an architecture point of view and also ETL and BI. So stay tuned. Thank you for your introduction. Thank you, Indra. Uh, I'm talking to Mr. Arun. Arun, are you here? Can you hear me? Do you mean on or do you mean Arun? I think Arun. Oh, it's going to be on. I'm really sorry. You, I thought it's going to be Arun. So on. How how are we doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, I was just interested in. Understanding a little bit more about you know data warehousing in general. My background is databasing from about 15 years ago. More recently, it's been virtualization. I've mm -hmm. uh, taken some of the classes in distributed uh, uh, file systems like Hadoop and also Tableau. So uh, this is just more of an add-on in terms of understanding the total uh, picture on big data and um, data mining. Good. So this will definitely talk about a couple of things together. So thank you for joining in and stay tuned for more. I'm talking to Bhushan Dabre. Can you hear me? So Bhushan is not there. Uh, Dinesh, can you hear me out? Dinesh is also not able to hear me out, I believe. Gayatri, can you hear me out? No problem. So let's let's not uh, you know get into more introduction. I think a few couple of people have already joined. I've seen people are joining in and still going on. So I would say welcome everybody for an uh, webinar which talks about more in data warehousing and business intelligence. So let's have an, an 45 minutes, an hour, and let, let's see what all we can do in this particular webinar. I'll also try to solve the questions which is coming from you guys, and maybe in, in between or maybe in Q&A session at the, at the end of this uh, you know, webinar. So let's get started, guys. First of all, thank you for joining in and giving an opportunity us to you know, explain uh, towards in this course. Now, as we'll start, we'll have a complete, uh, you know, agenda clear that what we're going to do in this particular webinar. 
So as the, the course talks about mastering a data warehousing and business intelligence, so you will be a master when you actually finish this course and you get to know a data warehousing ins and out and also business intelligence ins and outs. So the objective for this webinar would be a, a kind of an introduction of mine, which was the introduction, you know, kind of a trainer of uh, this course. We'll talk about what is data warehouse and business intelligence. People who already know data warehouse and BI is good for them. If not, it's going to be beneficial for them. You understand going to be a data warehousing architecture. What architecture we can see that. We'll talk about what is data modeling and we also introduce an ERB tool, which is a tool from uh, in CA, Computer Associates, a company and is being used for data modeling. There will be an open source ETL tool called Tailend. Tailend is in a company, Tailend Corporation US. We'll talk about an open source which is readily available, freely available on the internet without any cost. Until it's any kind of a, you have an enterprise. <clears throat> okay, so now next we talk about a business intelligence. There's again an open source Tableau, but only a Tableau public is going to be open source, <clears throat> which is the license is not cost. Otherwise you have to pay for it for a desktop and other stuff. So let's get going guys and <clears throat> we'll definitely have a more question and session in between. So let's start now. This is me. My name is uh, Indra Bhushan and I'm actually in industry for last 15 plus years ASP experience I would say. I'm into data warehousing and uh, business intelligence. I currently work in a company called Virtuse Consulting US and India as a senior BIDW solution architect and actually I'm a professional trainer and I've been certified a couple of tools and technologies and I take corporate training, online training and offline too. So online is one of the passion which I always take it. If you can see that I'm in OMCA and I'm 2001 batch pass, pass out. I did work for Nucleus, RBS, SAS, Intel, HSBC, Hewitt, Gensar, Oracle, Wipro and definitely last virtual set and starting. So these are the journey of, journey of my comp, you know, com, you know, complete experience I would say. And uh, <clears throat> if you talk about uh, these tools, I've been working in a BI tool, which is IBM Cognos, SAP, MicroStrategy, MSBI, you know, you have a ClickView, Pentaho, Tableau. And if you talk about the data integration tool, I work for Informatica or Oracle Data Integrator, you know, definitely we have uh, this tailing in place. And also database or Oracle and SQL. So this is a small brief of mine, what's, what I do and what is my experience so far, which is really going to add on. So we'll talk about more the industry experience exposure. So let's start, uh, you know, what is data warehouse? That's the first question people will say and they'll have an, always a question, what is a data warehouse? Why do we need them, you know? And a lot of people have a different thoughts of, okay, somebody says it's a database, somebody says, no, it's not a database. So a lot of confusion around. So just to cut short, complete confusion. So as you know, there's a, there's a two father of data warehouse. One of them called WH Inman. So Inman says, you know, there's a two kind of definition he has given. If you say, if I say, if it is a loosely speaking without professional, he says it's a database away from your production database. That's what we're using for, from a reporting point of view. That's maybe a data warehouse. But if you come to officially speaking, what he says, a data warehouse should be a subject oriented, integrated, time variant, normal time collection of data for supporting management to make a decision for their process, production, sales, and a couple of more area. So that's this data warehouse. So let's talk about more in detail in usual stuff. So what is subject oriented? What is integrated? What is time variant and non-volatile? So it's, it's very important that we have to understand each and every aspect very you know clearly one by one. So the first thing we're going to talk about you know more a data warehouse properties. The data warehouse property, as you said, subject oriented, integrated, non volatile, and you know, time variant. So, this is other four property we'll talk about more in you know, step by step. So, the first thing we talk about is subject oriented. Why we say subject oriented? Because in the data warehouse, we are talking about one subject, whereas if you talk about an application, it has more from the application oriented. So, let's take an OLTP application example. If you talk about equity plans, talk about insurance, talk about loans, these are again a specific application and their data. If you talk about a share, talks about only the shares information and the saving, talks about a saving of your bank account and definitely your, uh, you know, saving and current account savings. But if you come to a data warehouse, these are all applications, but if you come to a data warehouse support or a subject oriented, it's actually all the data being consolidated in one place and you'll be talking about a customer financial information. 
whether it's the equity plans for the customer, whether your customer buying insurance, they're having a loans from your bank, and they've also got, bought some shares and they have some savings in your bank. So basically, you've been talking about a customer financial information. That's the data warehouse subject comes across. So that's my, more important that you have to understand these things. Okay. The next important part is you're talking about integrated. So what is integrated means? You know, why are you saying why integration is required? So very much said, you know, said, if you can see that I have a small picture drawing in the, in the slide saying saving is ahead, current account is kind of a body and then the lower part is loan. So these all are an application and each application has specific data. So data given on subject as defined and stored months, that's what we do in data warehousing. Whereas the OLTP has the production data has an every second data, which will probably has all the changes in your production. So if you can see that when you say integrated means you have your savings data, you have your current account data, you also have a loans data and you've been actually doing an integration that becomes a customer's information. So that's the basic difference of integration. So you here you have different different models, which is specifically have a different different data. Whereas actually you're looking for a data warehouse which should consolidate all the data for this specific customer and put it at one place. That's called integration and that is why data integration comes in place. Okay. The next important is you talk about time variant. So if you see in a production system what happens each time, for example you, you know, scratch your ATM card or you're taking your ATM money, so money from ATM machine, the moment you take out money, the debit and credit takes place at your data and you have a kind of credit minus one plus whatever it is either you're depositing or, or you're taking out money but if you talk about in data warehousing we take data on a specific intervals it is not that we do and do analysis in every half an hour every one hour or maybe a daily basis you will definitely talk about a kind of a what was the monthly sales what is the q1 my data how is the sales in q2 versus q q1 what is the total production happen in q3 and q4 so how is the year one and year two sales are we growing up, not growing up? So a data warehouse is the purpose of making a decisions. To make the decision, you need to have your data stored in certain snapshots. You can see that 1997, January data, then you have a February data, you want a March data and so on. Again, January data. So this is what you're saying. You probably look a specific data for a specific time period. That's called a time variant. It is not that each time the production changes, you go and do the analysis. You don't do that actually. You do analysis on a specific intervals. Now next is very important is as said an operational and warehouse it's basically a non-volatile that means you're not making a lot of changes as you do in operation. So in operation you do insert, update and delete and also you do a read whereas in the warehouse it's non-volatile. You're not making any changes. You What you're doing is you're taking your operational data loading to data warehouse and what we're doing only thing is reading you're not inserting not updating not deleting because it's a production data coming from a production databases for the reporting and analysis purpose so the reason being we are saying is we will not do a kind of a volatile because volatile is only happening in the operational it is a non-volatile state hardly you make any changes it is i would say incremental rather so you put the data today and next day i'll show you in the next slide we'll talk about here so this is changing a data. How are we changing a data in data warehouse? So you can see the, the data warehouse is this. So first time it is complete empty. So you will be loading a first time load. People also call it a historical load because when you design a data warehouse having data marks and, and measures, it's completely you know, empty. So you need to load your production data, figure out and talk to the customer how much data they want to come and see in data warehouse. You cannot take a complete production data for 10 years, 50 years, does not make logic actually when you go for reporting analytical purpose. So normally people, for banks, I've been working in a couple of banks for RBS and HSBC or any financials for that matter or you will always look for one year or two year comparison, how the quarter revenue has been growing, how the customer base is growing, how much uh, we are losing insurance customer base, how much insurance policy being sold. So those are being, those kind of query coming from a data warehouse. So that's the first time load because there is a fresh one. Now when you say refresh, you can see there's always an incremental. You can see that it's been doing an incremental load. That means if you've been already loaded till last month and this month data is there, so you load it till this month and next month again for the coming month will be loading it. 
So it's like one time complete load and there will be incremental load. So till yesterday, if you loaded a data tonight, I load only for today's data. You're not loading an entire data once again. So that's how you're changing a data in data warehouse. For us, you can see that production, you can insert, update and delete. As and when you need, as and when any transaction happen, uh, for example, you're going for savings or doing a card scratches while online shopping or offline shopping or a Walmart, wherever you do. So it's having always impact in operational. In data warehouse, it's non-volatile. So that's the one father have said what the data warehouse is all about. So the another father is very, uh, you know, he's also a second father who, who introduced a data warehouse in a different manner. That's called Mr. Ralph Kimball. He's one of the important, uh, you know, a kind of, uh, uh, I would say, father of data warehouse. We always call a father because these are guys who have introduced and invented the concepts of data warehousing. What he's saying that data warehouse is basically a collection of all your physical data and relational data, but put it into a data mart only for the dimensional model should come in place and you can do reporting direct for them. So there would be always a kind of a plus and minus. Uh, Inbound says something else, where Ralph says something else, but there's always has enough pros and cons of both of the, uh, you know, I would say design. And those approaches, I would also say. So let's talk about what are the changes and what are the things you can look for about both of the approaches. So if you talk about you know characteristics, it is very important that you should understand why and how people are writing. So if you say Inman and Kimball, so I have taken a sheet which talks about a comparison. So both have a different approach. So if you talk about a business decision support requirement, Inman is very strategic. He's saying take all the data from the you know complete company and then you plan which you want to go, right? Whereas Kimball says no, let's talk about tactical very specific thing if you're looking for sales talk about sales so that's always a difference if you say data integration requirement in one says enterprise wise integrator that means they have a sales finance operations hr admin uh, i would say uh, shipment every department put at one place a data warehouse and then you go for a data mart then definitely your integration requirement is more bigger if you talk about Kimball says no individual business requirement as i said sales let's talk about a sales data integration only Beyond that, we don't need it. If you come to data structure requirement, yes, when you're saying a data warehouse complete integration, so there will be multiple, uh, you know, information need, which is metric, non-metric, both. But if you come to a Kimball, it says only a kind of a key performance indicator. We need very to define a scorecard, where you want to publish a dashboard, uh, and also analytical reports. So very specific, I would say. That's the Kimball says. So if you talk about persistence of data source system, so source system have high rate of change. Definitely you're taking a, all the data from production and all the different different sources and all the different different department. But if you call it at Kimball, Kimball says source systems are quite stable because we're talking about sales. So only sales which is being stable, right? The changes being already done is in daily sales and incremental that way. Skill set, yes. When you're talking for enterprise, you need a bigger team and a number of specialists required. But if you talk about a small, in the Kimball side, because of the data mart concept, you need a very small team and only generalist. You don't need a specialist, uh, all of them. Maybe one or two, you need them. And if you say time constant, yes, when you say enterprise, it's a bigger, so it's going to take more time. Whereas, uh, you know, if you talk about data mart, it's taking very lower. In the, you know, it depends how many subjects you are doing it. So time constraints are depends on the subject. For example, sales, for example, finance. And if you say cost to build, yes, it's been very much said, if you're going for bigger, then the cost is high, whereas you're going for the smaller data mart is basically a low cost. So here we're talking about a data warehouse. What is a data warehouse in both of the approaches? And if you've seen that, what are the difference between them? So guys, if you have any question, you can raise them up. Otherwise, I'll just take it for further from here now. So let's talk about what all tools are available, you know, in the market and which has been very popular doing this. So one is important to say, you can see that ER, which is an entity relationship or a schema modeling. So when you design a data warehouse, you need to have, you don't do a create table all the time, right? There should be having a kind of a modeling tool, which really helps you the number of changes you do in the production as well. And also in the initial designing. So a very popular call ERWIN, which will have uh, in the syllabus which is coming from a CA, which is a company called Computer Associates Technologies. And the next is Dell is also having, so it was actually Toad Data Modeler, Quiz software, which Dell has bought it over three years back from now. I mean, previous, I would say. Now, if you say data integration and ETL tool, very much popular, is, which is called Informatica. 
tail end has been taking over very much. I think it's taken almost 20% of the market now for the data integration. It's been growing uh, like anything. It's been freely available as well. And it has more than 600 transformation plus. And they can talk to any, any language and any, uh, I would say, an application. They got Java and Python based uh, kind of a language. So somebody knows Java, good for them. If it is not, then still you can work upon, nothing to worry about it. So it's supporting Java and Python. Then the SAP BODS, there's data services for SAP side. They're having a data integration tool from the SAP business object. BO stands for business object. So this is one of the suit. And next, Oracle has Oracle data integrator. This is also very popular for the Oracle product whom people are already working upon. So these are actually data warehouse products where you can do a modeling and you can the ETL. So that's from a data warehouse side. So let's talk about a bit of data warehouse architecture. How actually really it's working? Why do we need this uh, in all tools and our stuff? Where is the catering is? So having said that, you will have a multiple source. You can see that you have a multiple source system here, which is an operational system and you have a flat file coming in and you're using a place called staging area. Now let me tell you what is staging area is. Staging area is a privately, I would say, and a temporarily stages a kind of a space where you dump all the data from flat file and operational system and put it at one place. You do a lot of cleansing, massaging if necessary, and then you have a data warehouse in place. So when you have a data warehouse, this is again an enterprise wise, we talk about in one methodology, not from a rough Kimmel. Rough Kimmel talks about more from a data mart concepts. So here you have a metadata, summary data, and raw data. That's the reason the very, you know, I would say is taking data from all the departments overall. So they're taking, they have a summary data, they have actual transaction data, and also a metadata for that information, which is coming from the source systems. Now, after that, once you have your data warehouse, you create your data mark as a set subjective. So it's very much says purchasing, sales, and inventory. So you talk about three different data marts and after once you're done, the data mart is created. When your dimension and fact is ready, the user can access and can do a reporting out of it. You can do analysis out of it. You can do a report, you know, mining as well. So the users are being free to do all these things. They, they can do a data access via cube or so on. Okay. So I think I have one question coming at from, uh, uh, Srinivasan, I have a question related to data loading. Okay, go ahead. Give me one second. I'll unmute you. So, Srinivasan, you are you there? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hi. Uh, I work as a DWH tester uh, here in the organization. Uh, I have a question related to uh, data loading part. As far as I understand, once a historical load has been completed. Uh, if the data loading was not done for three days, I mean, we're not loading the data for three days, uh, we probably changed something uh, on the source system itself. Uh, there is an insert was happened, there's a kind of a update was being happened. So we lost the data over there. So how do we really get the history of information? Okay, here? so to answer your yeah. question, Srinivas, good question, I would say. I appreciate it that you asked the question. So the couple of data warehouse you need depends what data warehouse you're looking for. If you say traditional data warehouse, it's always load data over the night. So any changes during the day, it will take only in midnight. Okay? So that you come up tomorrow morning and get the fresh data. That's the one, one aspect of changes. Second, there's something called online data warehousing. So if you want any changes then and there in the production and your data warehouse should also impact, those concepts called CDC, change data capture. Okay? So in the production, if you make any changes, the same copy will go to a data warehouse. Is it making sense? Right, Srinivas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So this is where uh, we're talking about okay. online data is, warehouse. Have... So that any changes in production automatically gets into data warehouse. Okay, thank you. I hope I've answered your question. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah, clear. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so coming back to the uh, you know temp, you know presentation here. So like Srinivasan has asked a question, anybody in, uh, welcome to ask a question, and I'll probably try to help you in within. Okay, now next we'll talk about a BI. So you've seen a data warehouse altogether and structure and, and architecture, and also you've seen a couple of understanding who's doing what and what they're saying. 
and probably now we'll talk about what is business intelligence. So as we said, you have a data production, what you want to do with the data. That's what you want to know what is happening, where is happening. That's what the BI comes in place. So business intelligence is actually kind of techniques and tools are there where you can do transform the raw data which you already have and then you go for a meaningful useful information as a report as an analytical uh, you know say report or you can talk about kind of a dashboards so those things comes that's a part of a bi so it also talks about how traditional data from performing from a normal data to a multiple initiative like you have to create a measures you have to plan individual processes who's doing what actually those questions can be answered so during the operation of business there are a lot of questions you may ask yourself or the business can ask you that okay what was happened how it is happening what happened what will going to happen later on and what do you want to happen so these all question get answered when you do a bi business intelligence because this is actually a kind of a technique and process to take out the existing data process them and show you back on the form of analytical or a decision kind of a report dashboard and so on so that's really helpful for the business to understand so let's go ahead what kind of category of the you know business intelligence are there so there would be a strategic there would be analytical so there's a two different stuffs so when you say strategic management collaborates and against the strategy and method which they can you know would like to see the presented example maps scorecard reports and dashboards so they want to see a data on either on a reports either on a map or either on a dashboards so that's more from a strategy point of view but if you come to an analytical process when you say what do you do in analysis so there would be a strategy bi set for a foundation where you have a key kpi is called key performance and you know metrics key performance indicator you will have a set of key kpis and you want to see only those kpis how they performing for example you have a budgeted and actual so you budgeted 5 lakhs and actual expense is 5.5 so 0.5 is the actually a you know gap so you can see that graph coming in place so those are more a kpi as you have to perform kpi will have definitely have a formulas how to calculate a key performance indicator so basically if you can see analytical dashboard or olap like you know you have a productive analytics also ad hoc query comes in place when actually when the bi categories comes in place so couple of things you have you have a report you have a dashboard you have a ad hoc query you have a predictive modeling because you're doing analysis on the futuristic model so those are the category of basically bi now let's talk about how er being does it and what is the help you get it and what is er being basically doing it so er being is a data model it's a modeling tool which helps you to create a kind of a you know data model it creates the you know kind of a script also for example table the columns the two tables relationship and everything so i can show you one of the example so er been as you know we already talked about a kind of a center of data management they can do a data governance they have been used for bi data and bi plus data warehousing they also using a cloud and saas they been using for application development so that you can go for relational database management system also you can create with you have meta data management enterprise architecture database management and definitely they have always used for mdm so the er been is being used for couple of ways i'll going to start once again so we talk about from a kind of a data modeling tool so one of the tool we going to use in the syllabus called data modeling which is an er been and that's been basically coming coming from a company called ca computer associates so this is a tool you're going to use them which is a cr been data modeler so what you going to do with the tool i'll just show you one small example so there would be physical there would be logical and physical and physical and logical so there's we have conceptual logical and physical three way of data modeling we'll do in more detail when we do actual course so just to give you an uh, overview so we'll use a database like oracle 10 and 11g that's the version click it okay so what the moment you click in okay it gives you a kind of a space to work upon so here you can create a table right so these are the view you can see with the primary key display you can see with the you know normal attribute display fine here you click this is the entity so when it's logical is entity physical is a table so you click it here and you can name the table what you want to let's say i'm using an, i'm looking for an stg employee table to load so i'll say stg employee is one of the table so the moment you click here double click at this you can see there couple of things coming in 
So this is the property where you can set all the, all of these stuffs. Now here basically what you're doing, you can go and create the columns if you want. So you have employee number, employee name, and couple of things you do it. So and you have your primary key for and the other stuffs. So to be very honest, what we're doing is we're basically creating a couple of tables. So you can have one table, then you will have another table coming here. You create one more table and then we'll have a linkage, we'll do a relationship and then how complete model comes across and it basically having a relationship inside you and then what you do, there's something called forward engineering and reverse engineering. So what you're doing, you're basically doing a, a forward engineering that means you're creating those script to, uh, to the database. So when you say forward engineering, what happens if you go to a schema, you can see what do you want, you want to create you can you want to create a table and you want to create a drop and every all the scripts will automatically create. For that, if you click in preview, so you can generate the preview if, if you want. See that these tables are already coming in. So we can go and see what other things are coming in. So first of all, we normally go for a logical where we have a table and an entity and a relationship between the tables. And then what you can go and create the couple of attributes if you want. So here is a couple of attributes. So for example, I'm saying uh, employee number and uh, we can give the kind of a data type number or uh, maybe you know character, what all you've been using in, you can still go ahead and do that. You make a pr primary key, then I'll say I'm going for an employee name. So those things are very important. What you're actually talking about here is the size and all. And so if I say okay, you can see this, these two columns are coming in. So this is how you're making the tables. So go to actually, you, if you go to physical and then you say, I want to go for an, an a forward engineering. I want to actually execute into the table. So you need to connect with database and when if you go for preview, you can still see that tables. So these scripts, you can see that automatically generating. I'm not creating the script. I'm only creating a kind of a model. So that's the benefit you do it with your uh, ERB tool. So you create a complete dimension, fact and everything and then you generate them to the table directly and you can still have this script. And it saves .er file. If you can save as, so it's saving .er file. So I say I employ or maybe I say, uh, let's say for example, sales. And I'm, for example, desktop I'm saving in. If you open later on, you'll go and take it from there and opens you the what model you have created. It is very important that same model will be created. You can have a versioning if, if needed. So that's the place we're talking about more from a data model point of view. So this is the final outcome. You can see that this is how we created a employee table. You have a primary key and all. So you can see uh, going back this employee number is the, the top one is basically a primary key. So if you double click here, you get that you already have a primary key. You already send a primary key altogether, which is the employee number, fine. So very important to get to know what all you've been doing. So if you can see this, if you say without primary key, I only see that entity. This talks about only primary entity. This talks about an entire. So this is a kind of view you get it. So this talks about more or less a data model in how you do it. So I'll just close this for a while. We'll do it more when we actually do the uh, in a course itself. This was a complete view. So this is what you do in the data modeling. You create a model and then you generate the script directly to a database. You need not to write create table at all. So you can see that these are the primary key and these are the columns associated to that. Here is a relationship. Employee is an office. So office and master employees the transaction. So you can see that one to many. This is a many. So those relationship you can develop. And then after it creates an automatically script which you just saw. You can do a forward engineering if needed. Okay. So going a little further, uh, what we have already said here. Now let's talk about a bit of them from an ETL point of view. Uh, let's talk about first things like open source ETL and commercial ETL. Informatica is very much commercial ETL as everybody knows that. But why the open source comes in place is easy, uh, very less cost, I would say no cost, no CPU cost rather. So if you talk about licensing model, open source and commercial how it works. Licensing model for open source is going to be open core model, no charge for extra CPU cycle. Whereas commercial charge them for extra CPUs, you know they have a limit over the CPUs. Licensing channel via GNU public license or maybe Apache license. It is a vendor specific. They sell to a vendors and then after vendors can either resell it or they, they become a reseller for the commercial. For example, Informatica. 
cost differentiation as you talk about is very much important 30 to 60 percent lesser you know i would say commercial licensing mostly and if you talk about the one time and more so if you talk about let's say 100 rupees it is more than 30 to 60 percent less it may be 20 rupees and 30 rupees the actual cost coming in open source so it's a huge gap 70 80 percent gap of the in the costing itself that's why people still prefer for an open source that is still coming in subscription it has the licensing part but pretty less if it's a support and maintenance, you know, close to commercial vendor cost most, mostly. Why it is saying the when the support is actually has a very similarity. Support may be based on the number of project you've been buying in, number of licensing you're buying in. So it's been close close to the same. Support will not have much of the uh, commercial cost. Advantages, there are definitely what advantage we're talking about here. So if you see the most of the time, what advantage we're talking here is we are saying what is the commercial and open source you have to go and download it you don't have to pay anything and you have a lot of open source you know sources and there will be forum also available so do not worry if it is an open source does not mean people are not supporting you there would be forums our type of support and maintenance you know definitely pricing model are there there would be free forum you know you can see the silver gold and platinum additions here, not offered in the tires, mostly in the licensing. When you buy a cost of license, you also give us support cost. So that was the difference between them. Why I wanted to explain it here because we'll go from one of the open source tool called Tailin. So I think people must be knowing it. If not, the Tailin is one of the you know open DI, which is called Data Integration Studio, and it's being basically used for generating your data transformation scripts. Uh, actually, this is underlying in a Java. It also written in a Python, so you can have your script written in Java and Python. So you can definitely generate uh, over that, you know, actual script. So what DI Studio typically do is they do a synchronization or application database. They do a write time or a batch exchange of data. They do ETL extract, transform, and load for analytics. They do data migration, complex data uploading, and also quality exercise. And no, no matter you have to believe it, it's very good for big data as well. So this is from a Talent BI perspective. So let's talk about Talent BI a bit of them. Not much, but I'll give you a fair idea. The history is 2002, they've initiated. Actually, they are actually, they are not initiated their own. They were, they're working for one of the US organization, agriculture organization, and they have come across in 2006 and launched their first uh, version. That's what being been doing in the industry. As of now, they've been doing well, and they have very, you know, 30, 20, 30% market share is already available for them. These are the partners you can see that Talent certified partners globally, Cal Germany, Accenture, CSE, Logica, and Sopra. So they are the companies being globally acting as in a, one of the uh, you know partners. America, there are a lot of people like Putney, Sapien, Cyber, and other companies. Whereas Europe has a couple of more companies coming in. If you can say who are the customers, you can see that all the big big champs. I mean, I have not heard anything is left so far. Banking, finance like Bank of America, Alliance, uh, Excel, Citibank. And couple of more Swiss Life service. You can see the Deutsche Bank, uh, Thomas Cook. These all are being actually custom for them. eBay in marketing and retail. Public sector they have been using in again. So you can see that uh, Canada Natural Resources Canada and so many other other customers are there. So this is the customer. It is again a very less in the list, but I just wanted to show you some application and integration so they actually got a data integration very much popular uh, where they have an analytics which is etl extract transform load for decision support system they also have operational integration so like a data application synchronization we also discussed a uh, cdc which is change data capture with the uh, you know operational uh, bi normally we use it or for an online data warehouse it is very good for data profiling and cleansing, which is what part of data quality. They have reference data management, which is MDM, and application integration. They can connect to SAP, they can connect to uh, Oracle, they can connect to any kind of uh, applications. They have connected for them. Okay. Going further, Talent offerings. What all they offer actually? If you can see Talent platforms, so big data, data management, MDM, enterprise integration, which we'll be looking in, data services, hybrid cloud. They also in cloud. Talent Enterprise, Big Data, Integration and ESV, Enterprise Service Bus, that's they call it. And they have a studio for, they have an open studio for, they would be free of charge. They, they're not charging for anything for studio and the support is also free. Perhaps only the in enterprise are being basically charged when you go for an, on a licensing point of view. Okay. 
Having said that, we have a short of time, we'll still go and explain and we'll show you one or two models how it really works and uh, you probably can see them working. So this is a welcome page for you know, Open Studio you, and then you probably will go for the uh, Tableau. So I'll show you one or two uh, small aspects. So this is going to be tailing, if you can see that, I'll be able to show you the actually the version other stuff. So you can see that 5.5, that's the version you're using in. It's again an open source. They're actually using Eclipse modeling project. This is based on uh, you know, the also the Eclipse uh, tool. So having said that, I'll show you one of the things which has been perfectly working. So what we can do is here, what all things really we, we probably do it from particular uh, tail end. So if you want, I can close it up and just show you. So despite, you know, doing what is the existing one, we can still exit and show you where it is happening and what is happening. So you can see that tail end, you can open it from here. Open Studio for data integration, that's what we're using in and we'll show you uh, for how one of the data load, what we can do it for the tail end, which is again free of cost. You're not paying any, char any charge, no licensing for the person. So here you can see that this is project is already done. We can create a project or open the existing project, delete a project, import a project. So what I'm doing is I'm open the existing project which is already there. Skip the introduction, you don't worry. So this will open the workspace where you can design your, uh, you know, complete job. Job means a job talks about source, transformation and your target. So you can see that how data is being loading. So what I'm going to show you, I have a database. So I'll connect the database as well and we'll have a flat file where you can show the flat file data loading into your database table from your, uh, you know, tail end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to truncate the data right now. So there should not be any data there. That's fine. See that there's no data available here. So till meanwhile is opening, I'll still be able to show you what, what exactly data we're talking about. This is actually synchronizing libraries because it's an open source. They have created the couple of libraries where they can use within the projects. Okay, so meanwhile it opens up. I'll show you what source we are looking in. So this is loading the tail end. So you can see that this is the welcome page. The first page it comes. These are the job listing. You can create the new model or you can go for the existing. So let's talk about uh, something which is already existing one. Where I can explain you what I have done, what you're supposed to do it. We'll create one of the map and see how it works so that you'll have a fair idea how the DI tool works. It has to have a minimum configuration of OGB. So you can see that this is the job we're talking about. We got actually metadata. So in metadata is actual part where you can have a file to be imported and also a DB connection. So we have one folder. What I'm going to do quickly, I'll create one of the, uh, you know, file delimited. Click it file delimited. I'll import that, I'll say, uh, you know, cust data, customer data. Click it next. What format are you using in? So we'll use a Windows for the, you know, format of uh, the flat file. We select the files. For example, I'm taking a customer information from here and I click it open. This is again going to be CSV file. You can see that a CSV type, comma separated. So the moment you say this, it will show you the data, what exactly the data is coming here. Click it next. You need to select what is the, you know, separator, a file separator. I'm using a field separator called comma. The moment you say comma and you say set as, uh, you know, first two as, as a kind of, uh, I would say, uh, a separator in the column rows and everything. So refresh the view. This heading is basically coming out the, the exact data. So if you remove them and refresh it, this goes to the first line. So what is saying set heading row as a column names. So you can easily, easily select from here header from first row. So whichever you do it, it will take the header from the first still in the column. But here the name is not coming up. But if you can set heading as a as a row column, here it will come. See that customer ID, customer name, address, and so on. 
that looks fine you click it next now here is the metadata if you want to select them a data type integer and, and you can maximize them length 20 30 for example i want to go for 50 of the length address going to be 50 on the left city looks 30 would be okay uh, and then zip is fine country going to be again 50 you know that's all so this is what we're saying we, everything is coming in what is the six columns you can go back and see what is we talking about six column is actually they're saying that's fine they have the same symbol of they have, have some country and their state so this county and this is country by the way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write this is you know maybe a state for example and here i'm going to write the country so the moment you write this, this becomes a columns and you say finish it. The moment you say finish, you get your imported. You know, this is what you're saying complete things. So you already imported, the metadata is already ready. So this is the metadata you already imported just now. Anyway, so that's the one way you do a import of your uh, flat file. I have created a source file. You can create a folder while creating, you can create a folder here if you want. You can also create if you want to share a target files, for example. So all the target files you can keep it here when you publish it. Anyway, coming back to the next one, uh, we have a DB connection. So I have connected a DB. So you have to create a DB connection. For that, you have to go and create the connectivity. So we'll have an Oracle as, for example, Aura. So the moment you click, you know, it will ask you what data type you're looking in. So you have all the databases coming in. So I'll not go and take all this stuff and show you all this, you know, step by step, but this is what, how you can do that and give the complete, uh, I would say, connectivity. This is, I've already imported and I have a couple of tables coming in. So these are all metadata I've already imported here. Fine. Now I'll just show you one of the map which has been already seen here. So we have a source, as we've seen, double click that, it talks about what is the source. It talks about actually the data you've been already taking in. It is actually coming from uh, the uh, file, the actual file of your sales data. We are taking a sales data and then this is last and the separator is comma. That's what we already done. We are not making any change. The moment you click, it will ask you for a change. Uh, what is advanced settings? You know, what is dynamic settings? Just uh, leave it as it is for a while. So this talks about a source. Now let's talk about a target. So this is the target. As I already said, the connection is ORAPCON. We already created. This is the service name, local host, then you have a database, username and password and the table what you've been using in. So the moment you use the table, it will show you there's, a, there's actually a database connectivity catalog, what database is being already created here. Fine, so I'll just cancel it for a while, it's not required. But still you can go ahead and see which table are you being really connected with uh, in the map itself. You can still go back and change. So you can see that I have a couple of tables, so let's not get into. Now we have a source, we have a target. There's something called TMAP. It's actually a transformation. T stands for transformation, M for you know mapping. So if you double click that, what is doing it is actually mapping the source to target. Can you see that the couple of this is the source, transaction ID, year, month, other way writing, and this is the target. So this is what transaction ID is being the actually this expression is doing a ma mapping. And here you have an ID and you know kind of a detail of each and individual column, the name, size, and other stuffs. So the moment you done the mapping, you can come to that run section. So you have to just click and run. What it happens? It will run the, the actual mapping. It will talks about okay, these are the component. I say yes. This is a generated. So now it will generate. It's gonna be based on your Java. So you can see that it's saying connecting. To the socket connected and disconnected so what is this see that 717 rows 0, 0, 0, 0 0.0 seconds and this is what is total so this is source this is target let's go at the back end and check whether data is being already published here or not bingo look there so you guys being already loading data from your databases i mean from your flat file to your database this is how a small, you know, I would say tail end it works. So you need to have a com complete uh, integration of your metadata. You need to import this source file. Then you have a connection, you drag and drop, and you get your transformation done. So this is what we're going to use from the tail end point of view. This is an ETL tool, data integration tool. 
So taking not much of your time, as we already short of time, I'll give you ten. Take I'll take you more ten minutes to uh, cover one more topic called Tableau. Going back to the presentation, uh, we'll have a short definition more. I would say. So as you already seen this, let's talk about a Tableau. Tableau is a data visualization tool which is being used for you know representing your data in a different manner. Okay. I think uh, Nilesh have asked a question. Where is the transformation? Yes, Nilesh, I'll show you where is the transformation. So right section, you can see these are transformation. For example, if if you stay, this is for processing. So if you go to the processing, you can see a kind of a T map. The moment you click, you can see the T map. Right, Nilesh, have you got the answer? Just quickly say yes if you got that answer. So at the right side, this is all transformation is there. Thank you very much. Sorry for delayed response. Okay. This is what we are saying that how we are being using the informatic and uh, sorry, uh, telling not informatica. Now we talk about a data visualization tool Tableau. This tool is probably being using for and how you display and visualize your you know data, which this tool going to help you and they work as a, as a document like an Excel Excel document. It has a worksheet and workbook concept. So data visualization tool allow you anyone to organize present information intuitively. Why intuitively? Because you can intuitive. Automatically, it talks about it will train you your own way. Data is quite meaningful, and definitely people being love to doing it. They can see the dashboard. See this Tableau as a as a company is basically uh, they started in 2003. They were biggest customer like Google and all. Uh, the headquarters in Seattle at WA. Key partners, the bigger key partners is Oracle, Microsoft, and Teradata. They're the bigger key partners, right? Saying that uh, these are the 4,000 customers being doing today, and they have a bigger, biggest competitor in data visualization. Even they are also beating ClickView, Spotify, or any other other tool in the market overall. So they've been joining, they're running the market like anything. They're close to have 45% market share now. So if you talk about Tableau product, Tableau desktop, it was probably it's basically an ad hoc tool, but it's basically a, a kind of a license. The only free thing for everybody is called Tableau Public, which will be learning in in the uh, you know this course. So we are going for Tableau Public. Whereas I'll show you demo for our desktop. There would be hardly the differences on the features side. There would be differences. There's a Tableau server. It's based on web, web, and you have to publish your document to a server so that people can across on the web can really see that. There was something called a local sharing. So Tableau can also be being used for local data, where you can just do all filter and other stuff when you're sitting there in uh, your local server. And also, you can download those data in PDF format. Now, when you say public, create and publish interactive visualization and dashboard, embedded in website and blogs, free download for free hosting services. So this is being freely available, whereas everything is chargeable. I would say a license based. Now, what are the public you know, public can do when you say personal and when you say personal and use for desktop? What do you mean by this? That means you have a desktop as an addition where you can design and also run them on a desk, you know, in a desktop. But you need uh, actually a license to be very honest. It's going to be 14 days as a free version where you can do a trial version and use it. Build your business intelligent dashboard reports easily shared on, over the web. Embedded in the reports or any product, so you have one product, and you, for example, you want to run them. If you are sending an email, also you can use the link and send it to the you know people. So public use a website and blogs. Tableau public is one of the things which we can using as will be part of that will be showing you. So this is what is a Tableau public looks like. So I can show you there's a difference between these connection. So Tableau public will have a file connecting Excel, text, access, and little bit of you know. The O data. So whereas it's always we talk about a limited connection. Whereas I'll show you in one of our uh, you know presentation. So if you can see Tableau, I'll simply come out from Tableau. So this is okay. I'll probably come out from the Tableau, exit it from here. This is actually a developer edition. Honestly speaking, uh, I have a you know license for a one year, which we our company has bought it over. But we'll we'll see the Tableau public in the course where we have to define other stuff. So you click Tableau, double click on the on the product, it opens up, and uh, we can start working upon. So as we rightly mentioned, you don't have to worry about how the data will be looking like. They have a couple of uh, charts, and you know this is a data visualization tool. 
it really helps you. This is a professional addition of Tableau desktop. You can see that it's being very much clearly mentioned. It. So it will not expire in 14 days. Otherwise, uh, the personal edition uh, of the Tableau expires in 14 days. Okay. See that? Uh, you can see this is the section you always saw in Tableau public in the presentation. Uh, for example, this. But if you're coming back here, it has a couple of uh, more to the server and other databases like Oracle and all. So let's connect from the Excel and see how the data looks like. So this is the Excel data. I'm selecting them. Click it open. So the moment you open, it reads and can you see that it's executing query in memory. So they have a two way of doing data load. I'll show you just now. One is called live data, another is extract. So the difference between live and extract is live is basically any changes happen in your production, automatically the live changes will read it. The moment you run that, it takes a live data. Whereas extract is basically all the extract that's happening and then only it loads the data, right? So you can see that this is the, I have a table. So one of the sheet I have, and this is what the data you can coming in. You have an opportunity where you can rename, you can hide them. For example, you do not write a transaction date, so you can use txn date underscore date. That's what I want to see in the report. So you can see that very much you can change it. You can hide if you don't want. So when you say price, you can write, okay, I can say price sold or sold price, whatever thing you can write it down. Fine. And you say, okay, and you can see that there's a worksheet and there's a workbook. So click on sheet one. The moment you click on sheet one, it opens this sheet, right? So here you can see a dimension and you can see the measures coming in. So I'll take a dimension. For example, I take a country on the column side, right? So the moment you click in country, it will show you all the country like Brazil and other stuffs. And I say, let me take the price sold at my row level. So the moment you see, you can see that the actual sales on a country basis is coming in. You can then you go to show me you can change the you know complete graph if you want the way the moment you click it automatically change the way you want to look into this is a tabular format that says you know argentina what was the sales and so on so this is the moment you get a complete detail out of it now you already say that you have your country now let's go for a kind of a date so you can look into a, what date you can coming in so you can see that okay yearly this is what the sales are coming into 50k so let's go, go into more than year as say a quarter. So within quarter, okay, what are the you know months you were selling in? Say this is January. Fine, for example, you remove back, it will go off. It will show you again a quarter level. So it's very easy to handle, and we can show you a couple of data. It will goes more quarter level. It also shows you January for very month, you know, other months altogether the data is. Right? At the same time, this is an yearly basis or a country level we are looking into. We go further. So you can see that country has a state and then state will have their own city. So this is saying quarter one, January 2009 in this, you know, Argentina, Australia or whatever state we have, these are the city and this is what the sales is talking about. So it's very much being automatically shared. You can also color them up if, if you really need them, what color you probably will see. So you can see which color, it's kind of a visualization as I already said, it's a visualization tool. You can go ahead and see the different kind of uh, the charts if you want and figure out how it should look like. Also a pie bar. So you can have a graph, you can have a line. So whichever requirement comes up, you can still see them. So now the another way is you can do a filtering also. Now I've said uh, let's talk about a, a kind of a filter. So I'll remove city. I'll also remove state. Fine. and also I remove the city. So this is overall, I'll take one of the country as a filter. So moment you say the state, it will ask you what all filter do you like to see. Select from the list or use all. So you say I want to see the Brazil and Canada, right? And I say okay. The moment you say okay, it will show you only Brazil and Canada. So how you can see that, you can still go and click in the, in the country here. Fine. You can see Brazil and Canada is being already selected. It's very much showing that. The moment you click it more, it will go further into the Brazil and their own respected state and country. So it's being very much available. If you can see here, we are talking about more from the uh, sales perspective. Fine, so here you have a couple of formatting and you can do a sorting if needed. If you want to do a sorting on a descending level, 
you can still do that and get the descending data. So the reason is you are trying, trying to make it more from a, uh, I would say, a visualization point of view. Okay, so Osan has a question saying that uh, question related to a testing of these reports. Okay, so let me go back and ask, you know, we can unmute him. Yeah, Osan, go ahead. Hi, uh, I have you a question have a related question, to hi. these reports. Yeah, uh, I work as a tester and probably uh, I test the Cognos reports uh, relatedly to these pie charts and as well. What exactly we do is uh, when we're generating these pie charts, uh, probably we extract the data. Does Tableau have the same power towards extract the data that is representing the charts? Well, we're using a live data as of now. It's in memory data. So the Excel sheet, mm -hmm. whatever you have, until you're making changes, is taking from Excel sheet. Okay? Okay. So the moment you say, I'm actually taking a live, the moment you make changes in Excel, this will automatically change. The moment it loads it, it, it takes the live data. Whereas extraction yeah. is basically offline. Does it answer your question, Razan? Yeah, a similar way I would have, the question is like, uh, uh, when these reports has been deployed to the users, uh, when the users generating at their point in time, uh, do they have a chance to slice the data? I mean, yes, uh, they do. Part? They do. They have, as I said, there's a couple product you've seen. Go back to the, uh, you know, you know, see that this product, Tableau Reader Local. Can you see that? Share Local, the third one. Yeah. Yeah. I can. Also, they will have Tableau Desktop with a limited action. Okay. So people okay. can do a slice and dice. That's the reason, what is the purpose of a BI if the user cannot do anything? User can also create the ad hoc reports then and there. So the only thing is you, you being a developer, you have to define your dimension and measures and give it to them. Make sense? Yeah, yeah makes sense. Okay. Uh, yeah. I have a question also related to this. Uh, uh, in Cognos, we have uh, a cube report. Yeah. And uh, it, it's like to drag and drop it automatically generate based upon the requirement instead of uh, a pre canned reports. So that's the Studio, Studio, are you talking about Curious Studio or you're talking about uh, Analysis Studio? Which one are you talking about? Uh, I'm talking about Analysis Studio. Yeah, that's fine. That's based on Q. Yeah. Yeah. So this is actually based on measures and the dimension, the similar way. Okay. So they are actually talking about a kind of a visualization based. So you can see that uh, the country is become a dimension, whereas a sales and a, the normal price sale it becomes a measure. Okay. Okay. Uh, at this moment, if this is going to be deployed to the user, uh, mm -hmm. once it has been deployed, uh, it uh, does the user has the power to change the dimension and the fact values here automatically does he has a power to change it or it's a pre canned item that's once it's been fixed that you cannot change the model of this report so the lead writing is a very different concept uh, you know Srinivas whereas uh, the the user will only play with the data they cannot change it uh, logically otherwise there would be an always action but yes there's a time of rewriting it we have an opportunity we can okay. write back to the data all right makes sense thank okay. you so as you can see, a couple of things is there, filter and other stuff. This is some which we already showing here, the measure. You can go ahead and make the change in average. They'll show you the average. The moment you go here in the in the sum. So in, in the measures you can do, do the changes. That's what the user can do it. Thank you very much, uh, Srinivasan, for the question. Okay. I got uh, Mirage Mirja. Okay, so let's uh, unmute him and then let's let's have a question with him. Can you hear me? can you hear me? I believe there is some coming in. Miraj did ask with all different product available for DI stops, what is the most preferred product in terms of costing and coding perspective? And will be covered in this course. Also, can we integrate web pages in that you know? Companies internet. So web pages are very different. That's going to be part of integration. Which you actually do, you know, integration over that uh, Cognos or, or, or Tableau or anything with the local. Uh, as I said, it's being very much uh, 
uh, I would say user friendly. They are still there. Can you hear me up? Can you say yes or no if you can? So can you speak up? Or do you have a mic issue? Okay, no problem. I think yes, there's a mic issue. No problem, Miraj. So let me tell you the popular tool which I already shown before. Is, uh, I'll, I'll show you what are the popular tools coming back. So let's see. So the popular tool would be a BI where every BI tool is coming in place. So you have uh, Cognos, you got uh, BI, uh, you know, I would say you know, SAP BO, we got a click view. So there would be a couple of tools. So if you talk about data visualization, tab, Tableau, click view, Sportfire, uh, these are the Jasper Soft, these are the actually tools coming in. And if you ask me, uh, we'll definitely use it from the ETL point of view. As I said, we're going to use ta the talent, which is being for a data integration, which you just saw, you know, how the data is being loaded in your, uh, from flat file to your, uh, you know, database. So in this demo, I have tried to cover uh, in a small one or one, one or two items in the individual product. So overall, this one, this is what you're going to learn a complete detail, the complete talent and also a uh, detailed form of your tableau. As of now, I've just shown you one small report to create that. There would be formula, there would be calculation, couple of things come in. So you can see here, so you can still, you can go for a sorting, you can do a formatting and so on. So you can just do a filter which I already just shown you. So this is what is very important. You can still talk about our pages. So when the moment you say page, the country becomes the main page and you know, you can still go for filter and say select all or maybe one or more, two. So this is a page level data would be this and then you can select the state overall. So I think this is being a completely, uh, you know, Tableau data visualization tool, would I say. And I, I believe this is what I was supposed to explain it. I wanted to check it out and, and explain you complete things. Uh, I think I have a question with uh, Sapnili. Uh, Sinos also says, uh, what is the difference between Cognos BI and TM1? Cognos BI is a business intelligence tool, whereas a TM is more or less in a Cognos forecasting, uh, kind of a fo forecasting data, especially for, that's actually in memory queue, and they are being only mainly using in the forecasting for the, uh, you know, bank, you know, banking and financial stuff. So let's have a, a question from Sapnil. Do you do your mic is working? Oh, somebody says no, no problem. You type down if you have any questions so far. So let's have a question answer session, guys. If you have any question, please let me know, and uh, we'll probably talk about more from uh, the syllabus point of view. So I'll give you one small brief, uh, you know, kind of a syllabus that what we're gonna read, and we actually go for. When the course starts, what I will you probably uh, read in one of the you know, modules? I'll show you one of them. So, we'll talk about more from a data modeling concept which you just saw, which is the basics I've covered. We'll talk about more in detail like dimension, fact, granularity, type of dimension, type of uh, fact, measure types, and then we talk about architecture a little more. Uh, yes, uh, someone is saying what is a better visualization tool for Tableau or SAP Lumira? SAP Lumira never stands in, in, in front of Tableau, my dear friend. SAP Lumira is more specific for SAP product and that's very, very narrow in, in, in the industry as of now. Not people have not even known that there's a product called SAP Lumira. There are very few people knows who are being aware of the SAP side. So to be very honest, uh, people who are, you know already talk about more from uh, you know a tool perspective, very rarely they they probably knowing it. Fine. So now let's talk about. I'll show you a kind of a, a small uh, course which we already said that. So let's talk about uh, one of the course, and I'll show you. So I'll talk about a syllabus. This is the syllabus actually, just to let you know. So we'll talk about uh, first module, which is data warehouse and BI introduction, data warehouse architecture. We'll talk about dimension and fact. We'll talk about data modeling, which the ERV we already said. 
now we will also talk about how you build data model there, complete detail. As you saw, just create one table, this very small example. Now we will talk about ETL, where we can see introduction and we also create a BTL project on that. We will have the introduction for Tableau and then we create a project and then overall project which covers modeling, ETL and BI, all of them together. So that is the syllabus point of view, my dear friends. So I hope if anybody has any question, uh, feel free to ask me. I will probably be able to help you to you know understand from a syllabus, from a concepts, and from the uh, you know DWH and BI perspective. So this is mastering data browsing and BI course altogether, which we've already talking about. So we are saying how many days will you, will be for? See, it depends. It's going to be 30 hours uh, course. So within 30 hours, we'll be able to cover up. If it is not, uh, you know, able to complete that, if you guys still need a couple of classes, we'll still do that. We can have a doubt session in between also or a later on of the, of the project. So we'll give you three projects. One is data model, one is ETL, and one is your, uh, you know, a kind of a Tableau. And there will be an integration project of overall for the certification. How, how hard is to is taster to learn to become developer? See, no, it's not like that. If you know tasting, you can become easily developer because you know pros and cons. Where is the lacking? Developer can really make that and you can really run the, uh, you know. Where is the next batch? As soon as we're starting next batch is 22nd and we'll have the next batch soon. So you can contact uh, Idureka for the next batch date and time. They'll definitely let you know and support you for that. So the first batch we are starting and uh, this Saturday, which is 22nd. Which covering, you know, as I said, all of them is covering introduction. So the actually concept behind making this uh, syllabus is more or less to make you guys more confident enough how the data warehouse, what is the data mart, where how the data is coming in, how you loading it, and how you are giving a dashboard to the uh, you know business to a CEO and CFO. So this is end to end, uh, I would say, a course from scratch, making a data table till a production of your reports. So I hope it makes sense and sorry I've taken a couple of more time and I think it is uh, it's a quite a good okay and interactive session so far and I'm pleased to answer the question if it is still needed. Do we get a recording for this session? Yes, you can contact to uh, support team for that. Please talk to them and get the initial uh, recording if they are being okay with that. Thank you very much. So I'm expecting a few more questions. If you guys are not there, then we'll definitely push off this session or else we can have still some couple of questions answered now by me. So I'm say thank you. So thank you everybody. I would say uh, it was, you know, pretty, thank you very much Rimas, for a nice presentation. Pretty honestly, I was very liking the interaction today we have. We have a couple of interactions with the people. I individually respect them, the question they have asked, pretty, pretty logical and I would have able to make the answer to them. Will it be the tutor in coming batches? Yes, Radhika, I'm the only one who have designed, written, and uh, you know, the templates also you can see that these being written by me itself. I'm the one who have designed this course and I'm running the you know training batch for Eureka. So we'll definitely have the batches coming in and uh, I'll be taking all the batches, uh, maybe weekend or morning and evening. So I'll be taking all the upcoming batches for mastering. And we'll make you a most good in your data model, your ETL and a BI. So once you finish this course, you would be able to say that I'm a ETL, BI and data model together. So all of three in one. Not in actually complete depth, but has a complete fair idea. So if somebody talks about modeling, you can still take a part of it. Somebody talks about a CDC and data load and a BI, data visualization, still you can go in part of it. So I would say thank you very much. And I, once again, I would really, you know, I appreciated the effort and time you guys have taken in from your busy schedule and come to the webinar. And it was my completely pleasure that I have, would have given more, more or less what we've been supposed to do. And we are looking forward to uh, see you soon on the batches. We'll give you the level best, that's what I can say. So thank you very much once again joining in. Uh, have a nice day ahead. Take care.